Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this special film premiere to mark the end of the British Museum's exhibition Tantra Enlightenment to Revolution. A very proud to have collaborated with the Centre for Bhutan Studies on this project. The film has been made by Dasha Kamaura, the president of the centre, who is also an acclaimed artist. The film charts the creation of a Buddhist sand mandala commissioned by the museum in response to the exhibition, made almost 5,000 miles away in Timpu in Bhutan. At its centre is the tantric goddess Vajrayogini, the queen of enlightened wisdom. The mandala was intricately constructed by nuns and monks from across Bhutan before being ritually destroyed as an expression of the impermanence of all phenomena. A large scale painting on fabric of Vajrayogini was also created by Dasho Kama Ura during this time, which will eventually be available to view at the museum. We hope you'll enjoy the film. My name is uh, Karmaura and I am speaking from Thimpu, the capital of Bhutan, in the Himalayas. I would like to guide you through a very special ceremony which provides a rare opportunity to witness the creation of a sand mandala. A sand mandala is a portrayal, a depiction of a realm of a tantric deity in two dimension and it is created out of millions of grains of colored sand. At the center of this mandala will be the tantric goddess Vajra Yogini, the queen of enlightened wisdom. So let me first introduce you to Vajra Yogini, the tantric meditational deity, by referring to a uh, painting. Now this is a painting by me in progress, right behind me. Uh, this painting uh, was commissioned by the British Museum and I started painting it exactly at the same time as the creation of the sand mandala by the monks and lamas of the central monastic body and nuns of the uh, Bhutan Nuns Foundation. If you look at the face of the Vajra Yogini, it is a mixture of peacefulness and wrathfulness or fierceness. And this is to suggest that she is in a highly awakened state. She is shown in a dancing position because dance symbolizes openness and freedom. What is the purpose of creating sand mandalas or painting uh, Vajra Yogini? They are all to facilitate meditation during which they visualize the tantric deity. Now that I have introduced you to this powerful goddess, and let us witness the creation of the sand mandala dedicated to her. And this has been achieved by the participation of the lamas and monks of the central monastic body of Bhutan, as well as nuns and yoginis of the Nun Foundation of Bhutan. But before the creation of the sand mandala, the ground, uh, the platform on which the mandala has to be created has to be purified by a uh, smoke incense offering ceremony and by offering a bathing uh, rituals.
so you see you see a llama lightly showering the platform with uh, scented water to cleanse it now for any spiritual practice to be sustained uh, there needs to be other things including sacred spaces so what you are about to see is the nearby temple of Vajra Varahi located in uh, Paro Valley and the nature around it. Vajra Varahi is a manifestation of Vajra Yogini. So they are the same thing. Now this uh, holy site of Vajra Varahi in Paro is regarded by the Bhutanese as a very uh, natural mandala of the deity. Now before the sand mandala is created, uh, we have to establish or, or, or lay out the measurement of the mandala. The size of the mandala in accordance with the wooden platform we created is 8 uh, feet in diameter. After drawing a circle on the platform, the circle is divided into 8 equal parts. Next, we see the creation of the mandala and for this purpose, we prepared 24 different color pigments. So inside the concentric circle of lotus pedestal, uh, triangles are overlaid uh, to form the background of Vajrayogini. Now each uh, point of a triangle has a symbolic meaning uh, to suggest that every phenomena has a beginning, a middle and an end. Once again to suggest impermanence. But the triangle as a whole is to be understood as the symbol of the source of all phenomena. important ritual accompanying the creation of the mandala is the tantric ritual of Chui which literally means to cut to cut away from all attachments uh, the Chui ritual is the single most popular practice amongst women in this country there are Chi associations throughout the country and they gather together to perform it regularly. Uh, it's also intimately related to 
the invocation of Vajrayogini as manifested in a wrathful black Dakine, Tremanakmo. And the cheer ritual uh, came down from uh, a tantric Dakini, uh, tantric master, uh, who was known as Machik Labdin, and her image is here on this Thanka, Machik Labdin. She lived in uh, Bhutan and Tibet in the 11th century. What is the meaning of this Chui ritual? In essence, as part of the ritual, practitioners visualize offering of their own bodies as offering to higher beings, but also as uh, offering to realms, uh, lower realm spirits to devour their bodies. And the Chui performance is accompanied by overwhelmingly melodic chants uh, along with the sound of ins uh, ritual instruments like thigh bone trumpets, uh, hand bell and hand drum.
important event uh, accompanying the creation of the mandala is the Dakini dance. It is a dance of the five Sringma sisters who later became the five sister goddesses of longevity. The five Sringma sisters encountered Milarepa, the great enlightened poet who lived between 11th and 12th centuries in Nepal and Tibet. From being powerful females, these five sisters became enlightened Dakinis as a result of following of the teachings of Milarepa. Here you see uh, five ladies performing the dance of the five Sringma sisters in honor of the mandala to Vajrayogini. While the Dakini dance goes on, the cosmos of the Vajrayogini is being created by the monks and nuns quietly as they continue to work on the mandala. They are working on the last concentric circle on the edge of the mandala and this represents the larger cosmos of space, fire, water, wind and earth. These are the physical foundations of the universe. You also see the Lord of Symmetries or Channel Grounds uh, in the form of uh, dancing skeletons. Channel Ground is a cathartic place for Vajrayana practitioners in order to overcome their fears, terror, and realize a sense of impermanence and death. Next, once the mandala creation has been completed, it must be ritually consecrated so that it becomes a sacred art. The most important part of the consecration ritual is to perform the sadhana to the Vajrayogini deity 
so that its practitioners can enter into the mandala of the Vajrayogini. Now the consecration ritual itself is a complex and a long one lasting over two days. But if I may sum it up within a few sentences, the mandala has to become a receptacle of the wisdom mind of the Vajrayogini. The whole sanctified mandala then is transformed by the entry of the wisdom mind which is invited to descend into the mandala and the presence of the wisdom mind of the Vajrayogini makes the mandala capable of imparting blessing and auspiciousness to the practitioners. Creation, consecration and sanctification of the Vajrayana Mandala is not to lead it to uh, preservation and storage so that it might be viewed in future. Paradoxically, after the consecration of the Mandala, it has to be destroyed and dismantled, which is a very dramatic and important moment in the ceremony. While the mandala is uh, erased, uh, so to speak, uh, physically, and the erasure um, process begins from the edge of the mandala towards the center. So first the uh, mandala is uh, wiped or erased from four cardinal uh, directions and then from four intercardinal directions. And all the elements one by one of the mandala is visualized uh, and dissolving into the Vajra Yogini herself. And finally the Vajra Yogini herself dissolves and disappears into unfathomable space because she is not born and because she doesn't dwell anywhere. sand that made the mandala is wiped and
then erased and collected in uh, fresh wrappers and transported to a very pristine spot near a river and then it is symbolically uh, released back into nature by uh, immersing the colored sand into the river. The immersion and dissolution of the mandala is a very powerful expression of the impermanence and transformation of all phenomena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 